Hello all, I'm Henry Waite. I'm the founder of the Oxbridge Group, which is the channel that you're hopefully viewing this site on, as well as a, a company uh, of tutors, uh, which is dedicated to making the market for admissions, tuition, uh, more fairly reward tutors, as well as provide better value to students. Uh, so please do check out the website that's linked below. Um, and yes, without further ado, uh, in this video, I'm going to talk you through a mock interview question, uh, and this comes from my uh, mock interview booklet. Um, and let me get that up quickly for you. So, give me a second. So this is my mock interview booklet. Uh, it's currently for sale on my site, uh, and I just wanted to tell you briefly about it before launching into this mock interview question. Um, so in it, um, it actually became a bit of a kind of an outlet for my procrastination. Uh, so it became much, much uh, larger and more detailed than I ever planned it to be. Uh, it comes to, uh, I think, about 105 pages. By the end, it's got about 100, uh, a bit over 100 mock interview questions uh, with kind of six extracts, graph sketching, microeconomics, game theory, um, anything you could really want uh, in, in a mock interview question. Um, along with um, kind of the most helpful part, which is um, that lots of the questions have um, hints attached to them, which means that kind of when you're looking at the question, you can just click hint, takes you to the hint page, and then you can read that and you can then click back to question and it takes you back. Um, and they also have uh, answers, which I think kind of really sets this booklet apart from other booklets, not that there are really any, um, that in, in so far as it provides answers, it provides hints. And most importantly, the questions are, are kind of quite quality, quantitative in nature. Um, so lo lots of the kind of economics mock interview questions that I've seen um, online uh, have been sort of, you know, should we privatize the NHS or that sort of question. Whereas really, in my experience and having talked to other people that have gone through Oxbridge economics uh, interviews, they're generally quite quantitative in nature. Anyway, right, I shall stop uh, kind of selling myself um, and I will show you the question, uh, which is going to be a game theory question. Uh, and as you can see, kind of it's all set up quite nicely. Uh, you can click on the answer. I won't do it uh, right now. And as you can see, it will take you to page 89, which is the right page for the answer. And some questions also have hints on. Um, now, I'm actually just going to stop this screen share because I'm going to share my screen with I'm going to share my screen with a version of the booklet um, that is slightly more spaced out just so that um, so that I can draw on it. Um, and I, I just made this kind of specially for this YouTube video. Um, and so my first thing I wanted to say is in this booklet, I give lots of kind of more general hints. Uh, and the hint that I'm going to talk about here is for kind of game theory questions. Um, and it's up here. So it's helpful to know when a question is a game theory question. And you're not really told this at economics A level because you don't really go into very much game theory, except um, I remember a little bit of like oligopoly stuff. Um, but you can describe a question as a game theory question, really, if it involves a situation where there's more than one rational player. So there's more than one kind of individual who's looking to maximize their own return. Um, and the Importantly, the outcome of each player depends on their own choice and the choice of the other player. So let's give this question a read. There's some stretch of beach A, B. So, so it just goes from A to B um, with customers distributed evenly across the beach. Uh, and this is shown uh, kind of below. There's two ice cream shops selling the same ice cream. So it's the exact same ice cream at the exact same price. So they can't differentiate by quality or by price. Um, but what they can differentiate by is by location. So consumers will go or customers will go to the nearest ice cream shop uh, and shops want to earn maximum revenue. Um, but as I said, they must charge a fixed price and let's call that three pounds for that ice cream. Uh, and the first question is, where will the two shops locate in equilibrium? So if I was answering this, the first thing that I'd be saying, I'd be trying to point out, this is a game theory question because both shop, um, uh, what do I call them? Let, let's let's call it shop one and shop two. Both shop at one and shop two are kind of rational agents and they're both trying to maximize their own return. And importantly, 
Um, the outcome for shop one depends on the choice of shop two as well as its own choice and vice versa. So, you know, if shop one uh, chose to, to locate at point zero and shop two chose to locate at point one, that leads to a very different outcome to uh, if they if shop one uh, decided to locate at point zero and shop two decided to locate at point zero point one. So, you know, somewhere somewhere around here. Um, all right, so now I'm just going to get my pen up. Um, and the answer to this part of the question is relatively in, uh, kind of intuitive, uh, which is that they both got to locate at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So, you know, somewhere here. Um, and what's the reason for this? Well, think about if someone um, locates slightly to the left of 0 0.5, there's an incentive. So let's let's say kind of here. There's an incentive for the other shop to go to as close to them as possible, but just slightly to the right. And that means that they capture all of the surplus um, on the other side. So they, they capture kind of all of this part, which is quite clearly greater than 0 0.5. And that's the highest that you can get. Uh, and the same can be said for if someone moves slightly to the right of the 0 0.5. There's an incentive for the other person to just park themselves marginally to the left of them and capture 0 0.5 plus this part. This means that if you're moving away from 0 0.5, you're always going to earn less. So there's an incentive, a strict incentive for everyone to stay at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. All right. So now let's move on to the next part of the question. As I've said, you know, it, normally in my booklet, these would all be on one page, but I wanted to kind of leave a little bit of space so that I could draw and write. Um, so I've set out the question again, just uh, for everyone's convenience. Um, feel free to pause it and read it. But uh, now imagine that we, we didn't previously define the length of the beach, I don't think. Um, yeah, we didn't. Um, but imagine that the beach is of length one kilometre. If a consumer has to walk more than 400 meters to get to the ice cream, they won't bother. And that makes sense, right? If you're, if you're, you know, half a kilometer away from some ice cream and you don't really care that much about the ice cream, you might not uh, kind of go to it. How does this affect my answer? So let me just draw back out this line A, B. Um, can I do this easily? Uh, right, so this is the line A, B. Um, let me label this A, B. And let's consider what happens if we kind of go to back to the previous equilibrium, which then both locating at 0 0.5. Well, the people from 100 and onwards, or kind of 0 0.1 if we're working in kilometers, and the people 900 and onwards, 0 0.9, won't bother going to the ice cream shop. So these people will all be unserved. So how does this change incentives? Well, if, if one of these people that's located at 0 0.5 now moves slightly to the right, so they move slightly to the right, well, they actually gain, if they move some delta to the right, they actually gain some delta customers over here because um, instead of like the kind of final consumer being at 900 meters, they're now at 900 meters uh, and delta, um, and how many customers do they lose? Well, they lose half of the ones here. So they lose delta over two customers in the middle because uh, the other person, the other player kind of shares these customers. Um, so how many customers do they end up with? Well, they end up with 400 plus a half delta, which means that they'd be made better off, right? And now note that they can continue moving and moving and moving until uh, they actually capture all the customers on this side, um, which would require them to locate at 600. There's the same incentives on the other side um, for the other person to move. Um, and, and so they will locate at 400. And so... Um, now, is there any incentive to deviate from this? Well, if you move slightly kind of in this direction, um, well, you're clearly just going to make yourself worse off. So you're not going to gain any customers on this side. 
Um, you know, you're still going to serve all of them, but you're going to lose if if you move kind of uh one unit this way or delta units that way. Uh, you're going to lose again half delta on this side. Uh, because this person will share them. Um, and then the same for going moving this way. Um, you're going to gain. Um, if you move delta that way, you're going to gain a half delta. Um, consumers move from moving that way, but you're also going to lose delta consumers here, which means that on aggregate you're going to lose a half delta consumers. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, your in equilibrium you're going to locate at four hundred six hundred. Right, moving on to the final question, once I've rubbed this out, and I, I should have said earlier, actually, I'd recommend that you kind of pause the video um, if you can and, and kind of think about these questions on your own. Um, but obviously, this is only one out of many of the questions in my booklet. So feel free to just use this to learn uh, maybe how to approach these questions. All right, so now imagine that the beach is of length one kilometer. Um, but if the consumer has to walk more than 200 meters to get the ice cream, they won't bother. So it's similar to question B, um, but just the distance is slightly smaller. Um, oh, let me just draw a line. This is again the line A, B. And now let's let's consider um again them locating at 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Well, how much custom do they each get? Well, they each get all the people between 0 0.5 and 0 0.7. And they get all the people from 0 0.5 to 0 0.3. I.e., they each get kind of 20% of the people on the beach, right? Now let's consider um, if one of them, again, moves some delta um, further that way. Well, how many uh, consumers do they gain? Well, they gain delta on this side, because this bound is pushed to 0 0.7 plus delta. And they lose a half delta here. So again, they're gaining a half delta. Uh, and how far does this carry on for? Let me just get my rubber to make this a little bit cleaner. Um, how long does this carry on for? Well, it carries on uh, and until you're 200 meters away from this 0 0.5. Uh, and at that point, you are at, um, at that point, you're at 0 0.7 here. At that point, you're at 0 0.7 here. And then your range is... Um, between 0 0.5 and 0 0.9. Now, we can say the same for that other person. If they locate at 0 0.3, then their range is between uh, 0 0.1 and 0 0.5. Now, is there any incentive for anyone to move? Uh, well, no, they're now each getting uh, kind of 40% of the market, which is the maximum possible share of the market that they can possibly get because their range either side is only 200 meters. So there's no strong incentive for anyone to move. Uh, however, there is more than one equilibrium that we can consider. Now this is because imagine that someone moves to uh, 0 0.2 and the other person stays at 0 0.7. Well, their, their range is still it's from 0 to 0 0.4. And this person still gets from 0 0.5 to 0 0.9. So they still get 40%, a 40% share of the market. Um, so how do we define where all these equilibrium are going to be? Um, well, we can define them kind of through a set of rules, which is we know that they the kind of ranges must not overlap. must not overlap and we know that they must be uh, between 0 0.2 
and 0 0.8. This is just because um, if you're kind of at 0 0.1, say, uh, well, you're only going to get 30% of the market, but you'll get uh, from 0 to 0 0.3. Um, so any position where their ranges don't overlap, i.e. they're more than 0 0.4 away from each other, and their ranges and they're between 0 0.2 and 0 0.8 is an equilibrium. So for instance, 0 0.2 and 0 0.6 is an equilibrium, 0 0.2 and 0 0.7 is an equilibrium, uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.8 is an equilibrium, and so on and so forth. Um, okay, that concludes this mock interview question. Um, I hope you found that helpful. Um, and I'd just like to reiterate that there's 108 more of these uh, in my uh, in in my mock interview booklet for you guys to have a look at. Thank you for watching.